Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning, Vision Church in Lockhart, Texas. It's good to see everybody, and good morning to our online viewers as well. It's good to know that you're out there in cyberspace. Okay. It's a beautiful day. I just thank God for it. You know, it just couldn't be any better. You know, you could be in Hawaii or Miami or some other Southern California, some other choice place, and I, I don't think it's better than this, you know. And this is this is it. This is as good as it gets. Nice, cool morning. Not too hot in the afternoon. Sunshine. What else could we ask for? To be in the house of God. The closest place to heaven, this side of heaven. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see everybody, you know. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I just, I love you. I love Jesus. And I, I just... I just want you to know I love you. I love his people. I love serving you. I love serving God. And um, it's a beautiful day, you know. It's a good life. I remember the days of old. No good. (laughs) No good at all. That's trash. That's why God keeps it back there in the back. Devil might want to bring it up here and put it in your face. Say, no, 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 no. You got to go. Just go on. So anyhow, I I got a scripture for you. And it comes from 1 Peter 6, uh, 5, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 6 through 9. So let's take a look at that. All right, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Hallelujah. Now, getting back to that adversary, you know, he, the devil's a defeated foe. The Bible says so. He is defeated and he's under our feet. But, that, but he can still try to get in your face and mess, you, mess with you. But you have the power in the Holy Spirit to tell him, devil, you got to go. And he has to listen to you. He's got to go in Jesus' name. So that's how you do that. Um, Just a reminder, keep Sister Dora in your prayers. Um, She's doing better. And uh, uh, we pray for a speedy recovery. I speak a speedy recovery over her. I speak healing over her in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we, 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 we dedicate this service to you. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you have your way in here. Holy Spirit, it's your words, not ours, that will be spoken here. It will be the word of God. And we just thank you for, for, for this service. And we thank you for the word that you've given the, the pastors. And we just give you all the praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. We're just glad to be here. So, um, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, We will continue our worship through the sacrifice of praise. Amen. I don't know if you ever thought about that, but the word said, uh, it uses the term sacrifice of praise. So when you praise God, worship God, it's a sacrifice on your part because you got to make yourself do it, I guess, you know. Uh, I don't claim to be a, a, a good singer, but I try. And, you know, the bottom line is all you got to do is read the words off the board. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Same thing with the song. Just, just speak it. Sing it if you can get a little tune going on. Otherwise, just speak it. And you're offering that sacrifice of praise unto the Lord, and that makes him happy. So I'll uh, be quiet now, and I invite you to join in the sacrifice of praise and worship. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand and continue with a good attitude of praise. Remember, God is here. You just have to connect. And His mercies endure forever. Your mercy taught us how to dance, to celebrate with all we have and we'll dance to thank you for your mercy your glory
some excitement in this club. Your mercy taught us how to dance, to celebrate with all we have, and we'll dance to thank you for your mercy. Your glory taught us how to shout, we'll lift your name in all the earth, and we'll shout to praise you.
Hallelujah, everybody. So how'd that work out for you? Did you give it, a, give it your best effort? Did you lift your voice unto the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You know, in Psalms 91, it says, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. You know what that means? That means you ain't supposed to be getting sick. But wait a minute. The TV says... In the springtime, you're going to get allergies. And in the fall, you're going to need a flu shot. And when the pandemic comes, you're going to need all kinds of shots. What's with that? The devil's a liar. That's all there is to it. The devil's a liar. The word says, you should, no plague shall come now your dwelling. And by the 39 stripes that Jesus bore on his back is for the healing of your body. Just in case you get sick. So, where does that leave us? Well, we have to recognize the tricks of the enemy. You know, the enemy will try to give you some old fake symptoms and say, oh, oh, my back hurts. Oh, I feel like I'm coming down with something. No, you're not coming down with anything but the Holy Ghost. The Jesus, the blood of Jesus is coming down. That's what's coming down. And you got, you got to walk in that. You got to believe in that. You got to talk it you got, before you get symptoms. And then when you do get those symptoms, you cast them off. Say, no, devil, I'm not receiving your garbage. I'm receiving the word of God that says no plague will come now my dwelling. And let me tell you, if you can develop this habit, this thought process, you won't get sick. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know, we were talking about the defeated foe and all that stuff. You know, it's not what we did. It's what he did on the cross. 
It's Jesus that defeated him. Though when he died, in them two days that he was laid dead in that tomb, he left his body in the spirit, went down into the pit of hell, defeated the enemy, took back the kings of death and hell, and then went back up and rose from the dead in the natural. So he paid the price for for us. You know, it's not what we do. It's not us. Yeah, we receive him and we receive as Lord and Savior and we receive all the benefits that come with that. Like no plague shall come near your dwelling or his favor is around you coming and going. All of the many, many, many attributes, the blessings, if you will. But in Matthew 17, now let me see. Sorry about that. Matthew 16, 19, it talks about the keys of the kingdom. This is not on the board. You'll have to get your Bible out or your phone if you want to see it. I'll read it to you, though. Okay, Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There it is. You got the power. You got The word says it. It's got to be true. All right, very good. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your yes and amen. Whenever you need something, his answer is yes and amen, unless you're asking for something that doesn't line up with his will for your life. You know, he knows what's best for us. He knows better than we do. So um, this brings us to the tithe and offering portion of our service, which once again, we're continuing to praise God through our giving. Okay, very good. And if I may direct you to Malachi 3, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. And I quote, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And once again, that's because of what he did, not because of what we do. He he did it all for us. He performed on the cross so that we don't have to get down here and perform like a a whatever. (laughs) You know, he did it all for us. He did it all for us. And all we have to do is receive it, receive him. You know, if you, you know, God gives you all this stuff. And if you go through life rejecting him, guess where that leaves you at the end of the road? Rejecting him. You reject his salvation. You reject his forgiveness. You reject all that, everything that he has to offer you. Well, that leaves you in a, in a bind, if you will, in the wrong place. You don't want to be there. So anyhow, you know, he gives us free will. He offers us the kingdom of heaven. He offers us forgiveness. He offers us salvation. It's up to us to receive it and take it and live it in our lives. Or you can go the other way. It's up to you. Okay, so back to tithe and offering. Please bring your tithe and offering and put them in the basket right here. And we will pray over them and bless them and offer them up to a holy God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. There it is. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's pray over our tithing offerings. Father God, we just thank you and praise you. We offer it up to you. We offer these tithe and offerings to you. We ask you to bless them and bless the giver in the mighty name of Jesus according to your word. Open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing that we can't receive. Rebuke the devourer for your sakes, for our sakes in the mighty name of Jesus and keep him from destroying the fruit of our ground in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's take a look at some announcements. Uh, Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Visit us online at vclockhart.com. Wednesday night Bible study, adult classes at 7 p.m. And we are currently studying the 10 reasons why it's better to have the Holy Spirit. 
And we also have youth classes on Wednesday night and children at 7 p.m. English service is at 9 a.m. and on Sunday, and Spanish service is at 11 a.m. on Sunday. And that concludes the announcements. So, without further ado, if you will, please let's join me in welcoming the pastor, Pastor Sally. We are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's good to be back. I, um, we do miss y'all when we're gone, you know. You're probably saying, yeah, right. <laughs> we do. We think about y'all, and, and, and we watch online. So we, we're watching to see what, what y'all are doing. And um, I'm so grateful for all the leaders that we have you know, we have good leaders that have grown and, and have come alongside of us to help us. I mean, the whole church, I mean, I, everybody is a helper. Everybody helps in all the kinds of areas. And, and I go back and I think to the first days, you know, that when we started this, this mission, this church, that um, the only people doing everything was my husband and I. I mean, we were, we were coming in and cleaning the church and trying to schedule and set everything up for, for Sunday morning service and have everything set up and, and just running, you know, tired <laughs> on Sunday. And, but that was, we were happy to do it. It was, uh, it, it's in our heart to, to serve and to serve y'all, amen? And so now we're super, super blessed because we have so many people helping us and we can um, take a break and know that the that the vision is going to continue. Amen. So I want to thank everybody that helped out, so Pastor Sandra and Brother Tony and Grace, of course, doing what they do. Everybody else that, that works on during the service, because there's other people. There's we've got our ushers and we've got people offering and doing teachers, you know, doing the classes and everything. And so uh, I'm real grateful for everyone and all of y'all that, that are here to support Vision Church of Lockhart. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you very much. And uh, I want to welcome everybody that's watching us online. I do, um, I, I have something from the Lord, but I don't think it's to share with the, wor with the world or with people watching us online. I think it's for us, the church, this church body, this family. And I want to share that with you, but um, I am, if you will, I'm going to try to go through my and, um, and hopefully have, I want to have time to tell you what, what I've perceived from the Lord has, has shared with me. And, and so uh, once we cut the, the recording off, I, I will share that with you, okay? And it's good. <laughs> So today I'm going to bring a message on redemption. Man, we've been celebrating um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? His death, burial, and resurrection. And um, it's redemption. Um, well, there's a doctor of redemption, right? But let me pray first, and then I'll explain a little bit better. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this morning. Father, I thank you for everyone that's here this morning, for those who couldn't be here today, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're with them, Father, wherever they're out celebrating, Father, uh, their time off and others are sick in their bodies, Father. I thank you that you're healing them, Father. So we pray this morning, Father, that you would be healed, you would heal them, Father, speedily. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you for what you're going to do here this morning. And, Father, I just surrender all to you. Father, open our ears and our eyes, our spiritual ears and eyes, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is telling each one of us, Father. And that today, Father, we would receive a word that we could take to heart. 
to our heart, Father, to fertile ground where it will be planted and rooted and sprouted, Father, for your kingdom glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> There's several uh, doctrines that, that um, they're real foundational on um, who we are as Christians and what we believe. Amen. One of them is redemption. And there's several, and, and um, some of them, it's, there's predestination, reconciliation, sanctification, glorification, justification, propitiation, election, and redemption. These are all um, doctrinal and foundational truths that we must know so that we can grow into... Um, the Christian that God wants us to be. Amen. And I think that a lot of times as Christians, we hear these words, we hear these words being spoken, and, and sometimes do we really understand what that word means? Amen. I'm not going to go through all this because there's a lot. And when I, I'm, I'm doing redemption today, and I sent Michael my scriptures and it was really long. You know, I thought he said it, I, it was over 50 scriptures that I gave him. And I said, I'm sorry. He, he came in like this, like his hands were tired. And I said, I kind of cut it back and, but, because there's so much. But hopefully I will give you enough that, that you can understand that, that you can receive and get it rooted in your heart. I think a lot of y'all, almost everybody in here has known the Lord for a long time, and you probably already know what I'm going to tell you, but are we living it? Are we really trusting it? Amen? And so do we, we, we really need to understand. So redemption is the Greek, the Greek word for redemption as a noun is apolotrosis, and the verb is exogorazo. And these two words they imply the same thing about redemption. And the, the meaning of it is to purchase out of slavery by a ransom payment. To purchase out of slavery by a ransom payment. Okay? Jesus came to, to purchase us out of slavery. And he paid a price. He shed his blood for us. And that was a price that he paid for us to get us out of slavery. You might say, I was, I've never been a slave. We were born slaves. Amen? Right? Because Adam, if we go back to the, to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned, right? And it took us, it separated us from the presence of the Lord, and sin came in. And so from then on, all of us, as we were born, we were born into sin. We were born into this world. We were born with a sin nature. And, um, and you can say, how can a baby sin? But it, it's the nature that is in humanity because of, of the sin that Adam and Eve uh, did, right? And so we come into this world as sinners, and it's not until we accept what the Lord did for us on the cross that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and that we are redeemed. We, we receive what he paid for on the cross, and, and we have been ransomed, and from that moment on, we are no longer sinners. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We have taken on the nature of God. Amen? A lot of people say that, that um, you know, you hear people say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Okay, either you're an old sinner or you're saved by grace. You can't be both, right? If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is part of you now. And you have the nature of God. Amen. You're not a sinner. Amen. You're perfect. In your spirit, you're perfect. Thank Amen? You. Amen? You're perfect. You've already, that part of you, your, your spirit has already been redeemed. You have the same spirit that 
is going to move on through, through eternity. You are just like Jesus is right now. We'll get to that. Amen? But you're not a sinner, and I think that that's, that's, that's redemption. And I don't think that we truly understand. Um, I, I don't think that we truly understand that. Amen? Amen? Sin is no longer an issue with God. It's not an issue. We've been redeemed. It's done. It's a done deal. Amen? Amen. Either that makes you really, really happy, <laughs> or you're shocked, or you're confused. I don't want to confuse you. Amen? But if I, if I was over-expressive, like, like Pastor Sandra, I'd be jumping all over the, this place here, right? But we are redeemed. Amen? Amen? So a lot of people, the message that most people are here is that sin breaks your relationship or your fellowship with God. That's one thinking, right? And then there's a stricter message that, that is out there that says that sin not only breaks your relationship every time you sin, but that um, they, they call you a, a backslider, right? Have you ever heard that? I don't think black backslide is in, in the Bible. But it says that you lose your salvation, and it's not until you, you confess the sin and, and, and you will be, you will be, uh, bueno, <laughs> sorry about that, <clears throat> I was competing with the, with the crackling, okay, and then others believe that you're Eternal salvation is still intact, right? It's still secure, but you lose fellowship and you can't get your prayers answered or you can't use by God because of sin. And this is what I had believed. Amen? But that's not true either. It's, it, it, all, these, all these reasons, all these things, it's not good news since we all sin. Amen. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. Amen. And 1 John 1, 1.8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Right? So Christians usually cope by trying to keep every sin confessed you know we keep trying to say oh forgive me lord i sinned or this or that or whatever and that's impossible there's no way that we could ever confess every sin because every moment of your day you might have sinned with you not even knowing it but it's a sin and it says that we all fall short of the glory of god right that keeps us short but aren't you glad that Jesus came and redeemed us and paid the price for our sins? He doesn't count your sins anymore, and that's not what we're going to be judged on when we go to heaven. Amen? The Bible says in Romans 14, 23, it says, But he who doubts, what does doubt do? It, it cancels your faith, right? He who doubts is condemned if he eats. But he does not eat from faith, for what, whatever is not from faith is sin. So any action that, that is sin for us, right, if we don't have faith in this, that we're doing the right thing, then that is sin for you. It says that whatever is not of faith is sin. So if you don't have faith in something you're, you're doing or that you are following someone else, if you know that that's not correct and you don't really have the faith, you're saying, well, you know, you're doubting, that's sin. We never think of that, right? 
and we don't always walk in faith. James 4, 17 says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Right? It's sin. It's not, sin is not just doing something wrong, but it's doing, not doing what is right. If you don't do what is right, then that's sin. And you don't think about that. Do you think about that? Right? Can you say that you love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? You could probably say that. And your neighbor as yourself. Can you say that? And know in your heart that it's the truth. Do you love all your neighbors? Because your neighbors are the people, not only the people that live around you in your neighborhood, but our brothers and sisters here. So you don't think of that. That's right. We're, we're, it's right to love our neighbors. Amen. But do we do that? That's sin if we don't do it. And we don't think about that. And man, I was thinking about my neighbors and our section of neighborhood, they're all retirees. When, not all of them, but older couples and single widow women. Across the street, that, this way lives a, a guy that owns a tattoo shop, you know, and across the street from him, maybe some partiers and stuff. But we're to love all our neighbors. It doesn't matter what they look like or what they do or, you know, we're to love them. That's, that's what the word says. But do we do that? Husbands. The Bible says that a husband is supposed to love his wife like God, like Christ loves the church. Husbands, do you do that perfectly? Do you love your wife the way Jesus loves the church? Can you truly say without a doubt that you do that? Or wives, they might get close. <laughs> Wives, it says that wives are to reverence their, her husband as the church is to reverence Christ. Wives, do we do that? Do we do it perfectly? No. Does the church reverence, does the, do, do, does the church as the body reverence Christ like we ought to? I don't think any of us do it perfectly. And those are things that are good. And if we don't do them, then that's sin for us. Can you see that, that we, there's so much sin out there that, that we live in this body that hasn't been redeemed yet. It's been paid for, but it hasn't been redeemed. And, and we could say, no, I don't sin. I'm, you know, I, I'm real holy and everything, but we do without thinking because we don't think about those things, right? I don't think, you know, the husbands are, you know, or, you know, are really treating their wives like, like Christ. They might try and do a good job, but, but there's so many things that, that are counted as sin. And that's what Jesus did. He came to pay for that sin. Amen? So here... These definitions that I just told you, it, we all sin through the weakness of our flesh. Our flesh is weak. And it's impossible for us to, to keep every sin confessed. You know, every little thing, it's impossible to keep it confessed. And um, even if it were possible, I mean, that would be, that would put all the burden on our backs instead of just resting in the peace that the Lord Jesus Christ came to give us. He came to pay that price, and he came to give us peace and rest. Amen? There wouldn't be any peace or rest in our relationship with the Lord if that's the way it worked. It doesn't work that way. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Most, um, 
most people, including Christians, right, see the forgiveness of sin as something that God can do or that he continues to do. It's something that he's on going on and on that he's doing, but it's not something that he has completed. It's already done. Everything has already been done. It was done at the cross. We have been forgiven of all our sin, past, present, and future at the cross. Amen? If we think this way, then we have a false concept, and we're constantly thinking that I have to get this sin confessed, and it's going to make us conscious of sin when we should not even be thinking of sin. Amen? But when you think so much on one thing or you're trying to be, you know, on one thing, it's going to make you more conscious of it. If you say, oh, I sinned today. Oh, i got to pray. If, you know, uh, Lord, forgive me of this sin or that sin or whatever. And you're constantly thinking, oh, that was a sin. And you're constantly thinking, then you're constantly going to be conscious of every sin. And that's not what Jesus came to pay. We've been redeemed. Amen. In the Old Testament, there were type, you know, the sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament, there were types and shadows of things, of the real sacrifice of Jesus. Those sacrifices were powerless, and they didn't really take away sin. They just covered it. Amen? Amen. But Jesus came to cover all our sins. In John 1.29, it says, The next day John, this is talking about John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the whole world. Amen. He took away all the sin. In Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. Amen. It was through the shedding of Jesus' blood that you received redemption, which is the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Your sins have been forgiven, all of them. The ones you uh, had in the past, your present ones, and your future ones. We are going to sin. You know, but we might not be conscious of it because you don't think about it like the examples that I gave you. Those are things that we don't really think about. But our attitude, our self-righteousness, you know, there's a lot of things that that are sin, but we don't think of it as sin because it's just the way I am. You know, that's the way God made me. No, that's the world. That's the way the world made you. But if you're in Christ, you have a new, a new nature. Amen. Romans 6, verse 19 and 10, it says, knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Amen. We should be living our lives to God. Hebrews 9, 25 and 28. And he only died one time and that's it. Amen. He's not going to come back and die for you again because you sin. Or any of us. Hebrews 9, 25 to 28. It says, not that he should offer himself often. Right? You know, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. Again, this is talking about the Old Testament sacrifices that they did every year. He's not going to do that. It's a done deal. It's already done. Verse 26, it says, uh, He then would have had to suffer what, what often since the foundation of the world, but now... Once at the end of the ages, which is now the church age, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for man to die once, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. 
Amen. He's going to come for us, and it's not, you know, sin's not going to, it's not an issue. Amen. Sin is not an issue. Your sin is not an issue. He will never die again. He dealt with sins of the whole human race for all time. Amen. Is this making sense to you? Yes. We don't have to ask Jesus to forgive our sins. He already did it. Amen. Remember Paul and Silas when they were um, when they were in prison and they were worshiping God and and the earth shake and and you know the doors open and the and the you know they were the jail, all the people were set free. And what did Paul tell the the jailer that asked that he, what should, what could he do to be saved? In Acts sixteen thirty one it says so they said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Amen? You and your household. That's a promise. All you have to do is believe in him, and you will be saved, you and your household. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We confess the Lord Jesus Christ, not our sins, to receive the gift of salvation. Amen? Romans 10, 9, and this we... we quote this every every service that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved amen and and this is a great miracle we don't we don't see it as a miracle but it's a great miracle when somebody comes up here to give their life to the lord they come and they receive christ as their lord and savior a great miracle has happened because before you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you were a sinner. But the day you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you became his child and you were redeemed and your sins were forgiven. Amen. 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 At that point, that's a great miracle. Right? right? Can, can, can you grasp that? Can, can I mean... Thank you, Lord. Does this mean that the whole world is saved? A lot of people say, oh, well, we're all, we're, we live in a Christian nation. We're all Christian. No. <laughs> no. You're not a Christian just because we live in a Christian nation. You're a Christian because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He did die for everyone. He died for the whole world. You know, I think I told y'all, when you see somebody that really rubs you the wrong way or that you're waiting in a line and somebody's being obnoxious and whatever, you just have to look at them with, with love, with the love of Jesus Christ because Jesus died for them as well. Jesus died for everyone. Everyone. He didn't leave anybody out. He died for everyone. Amen? But... Some people will not accept him as their Lord and Savior. In 1 John 2, 2, it says, And he himself is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Amen? Propitiation is one of the words that we're going to be looking at, and it means mercy seat. It's, it's, it's mercy seat in, in Greek, but the meaning is satisfaction. The blood that was poured on the mercy seat for us, God considered it as he, he was satisfied with that for the remission of our sins. Amen? All we have to do is receive forgiveness by faith. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through, through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Amen? But we have to put our faith in what God has already accomplished um, by grace to be saved. Amen? So it's not your sin that's going to take you to hell. Amen? It's not your sin that's going to take you to hell. That sin has already been paid for and forgiven. It's a ransom has been paid. Jesus paid it. What's sending you to hell 
is that if you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've rejected the gift that Christ died for to give you. You rejected that gift, and that's what's going to send you to hell. You rejected Jesus. He died for you. All you have to do is receive that gift. Take it. Amen? And then you don't have to worry about sin anymore. You don't have to worry, oh, well, that's a sin. This is a sin. I better get before the Lord. I better confess it. You know, it is bad, and we'll get that to that in a minute. But you have already been saved, and, and sin has been paid for. But you have to receive that gift of the Lord. Amen? Can you imagine what our lives would be like if we would just accept and believe that? Because sometimes uh, we're told that if you're bad, God's going to be mad at you. Or if you do this or that well, or something or you get sick, I wonder what that person did that God put sickness on them. Those are all lies. You know, he's not mad at you. He's not going to be mad at you. He, he loves you. And he's not even looking at your sin. You're the one that looks at your sin. He doesn't see it. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we shouldn't do. And sometimes uh, we pay the price for those mistakes. Amen? Amen. But God's not holding us, holding us to them. And we shouldn't be our, holding ourselves to it as either. Amen? Hebrews 9.12 says, Not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. We have attained eternal redemption, not momentary redemption, forever redemption. The minute you became saved is the minute... Um, you were you entered into eternal redemption. The same spirit that's in you right now is the same spirit that's going to follow you into eternity and live forever and ever and ever. Amen? Does that make sense? Do you believe that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. We have received eternal uh, redemption. One sacrifice... Jesus' sacrifice paid for it all. Hebrews 12.23, it says, To the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. Your spirit has been born again. Amen? And it's just like I told you, it's the same spirit that's going to take you everywhere. Amen? First. Corinthians 6.17 says, But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. The spirit that's in you is the same spirit, is identical to Jesus. Identical. And this is, I love this scripture, 1 John 4.17. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Thank you, Lord. Amen? That's profound. Just You're walking around with Jesus living in you. You are one spirit with him. I mean, can, can, can you imagine what your life could be like if we really understood that? I mean, that, that, I mean, we would be bold to go pray for people and, and see them healed right away, right? We, we wouldn't be sad and depressed because we missed it and we made a mistake and, and we, you know, we failed or we sinned or, you know. Because that, you know, sometimes we get upset at ourselves because maybe we did something we weren't supposed to do. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will remind you. It'll quicken you. If you're doing something that you're not supposed to do and you get that little check in your spirit, you, oh, you better check it out. You're probably doing something you're not supposed to be doing. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So then again, our spirit, 
um, has already been redeemed. You are perfect. In your spirit, you are perfect. Amen? You are perfect. One third of you is perfect. It's wall to wall. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen? And it's the power of God in us. And we need to release it. We need to get our body and our soul in line with, with our spirit so we can go out and do powerful things for the Lord. He said we would do greater things, and he did. Amen? Okay, Romans 6.16. It says, do, do, not, do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you, have, you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Amen? We're, I'm not saying that... that Sin doesn't matter. Sin is a terrible thing. And, and we should hate sin, right? Jesus hated sin. And so we, those things should matter to us, that we shouldn't live n knowingly be sinning. Because either we're, we're in sin leading to death, because if you're in sin, you're opening the door to the enemy to come in and kick you. <laughs> Amen? To beat you up. You open the door. And he has legal right to it because you're in his kingdom. You're, you're, you're allowing whatever's happening to you to happen. Because sin has consequences. Amen? So we shouldn't like sin. We should stay away from sin. But... You're not going to be judged by that. It's already all the sins that we've done, Jesus already paid for them on the cross. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 8.23. You know, uh, before we move on from that, Let's go to Galatians 5. I didn't give you this one, Michael. Of oh, the 50 scriptures I gave you. <laughs> um, Galatians 5, 19 to 21. And I've mentioned this to you several times. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. And this, uh, if you go to 16, it's talking about walking in the spirit. Amen? If you walk in the spirit, you're, you're not going to please the flesh. But in, in 19, it says, now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. Do you know if you hate somebody, it's a sin? <laughs> it actually, is, um, the word says that if you hate someone in your heart, you've committed murder. I've done that. And I'm glad that Jesus forgave me. Amen? Contentions, jealousies. Do you know being jealous is, is a sin? Outbursts of wrath. If you, if you get angry real quick. Selfish ambition, delusions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who participate, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, here's a list of things that, that are considered sin. And he's saying this isn't all of it, but this is some of it, right? And it says that those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
You're not confused, okay? Don't get confused. It's not saying that you're not going to heaven and that God hasn't forgiven your sins. You've been forgiven. Amen? But if you're a Christian and and you're living like they like this, like these things, if these things are evident and they're things that you're practicing, what happens is that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, you're not going to live and have all the blessings that the Lord has died to give in you. You're hurting yourself. Amen? Because there's so many blessings, and, and when we live in the kingdom of God, when when... When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've been saved and he's come to live in your heart, the Bible says that you have been translated from this world, from the kingdom here, and you translated over to the kingdom of God. And so when you've done that, you live in the kingdom of God. And what's the kingdom of God? Everything has been provided for us. Everything's already done for you. You should be living in overflow, like the song that you, Grace was singing this morning, that we were all singing, in the overflow of his mercy. You, you would be living in that overflow. So it's not saying that you're not going to heaven. It's saying you're just not going to live a good life. And there's a lot of Christians like that, and sometimes we wonder, you know, he used to be in church, and he was so good, and now you see him there out in the world and partying and doing what have you. That's fine, but they're hurting themselves. I think they're the ones that are going to be before the Lord crying and gnashing their teeth because they were going to say, oh, man, I could have had all that. I mean, I could have had all those blessings. I could My body could have been healed. Maybe they got to, to heaven early because they were sick and dying. <laughs> you know, but he's provided for healing, and he's provided for provision he's provided he will he became poor so that you could be rich you know and you could have everything in in this world whatever your heart desires those desires come from god he puts those desires in your heart amen so it's not saying you're not going to heaven you're just not going to live the blessed life that jesus died to give you thank you lord where was i Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 23. Have I read that one yet, Marco? Okay. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Amen. Paul was eagerly waiting to have his body redeemed. He was so in love with, with Jesus, he knew what the Lord had done for him, that in his spirit he was um, already perfect, that he was groaning and just looking forward to the day when he would pass on to the next life and his body and spirit would be transformed. It would be renewed. Amen. It would be a glorified body. He was waiting for that time eagerly. Ephesians 1.14 says, Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of, of the purchased possession to the, to the praise of his glory? This is talking about our soul and our body. Amen. That has, we have been purchased, but that hasn't been redeemed yet. Amen? And that's what we're all waiting. When redemption is complete, it's going to be in spirit, soul, and body, and we are going to be known. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Amen? Until then... We can experience a renewed mind through his word. Amen. That's one of the words, that's one of our, that's our word that the Lord gave us at the beginning of the year. Commitment and transformation. And we, we, we get to transform 
by our renewed mind. Amen. And we do that by his word. And although we are waiting for the redemption of our bodies, we can receive healing, right? While we live in our mortal bodies. God has made provision for both the soul and the body, even though their redemption has not yet been manifest. Amen. He's paid for, he's, uh, he's given us these things. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is, is everyone who hangs in a tree. He took all the curses off of us. So we're no longer cursed. You want to know what those curses are? Read Deuteronomy 28. The first 14 are the blessings in, from 15 through 60-something, I think, or 59, something like that. It's all the curses. We've been redeemed from all that. Amen? Aren't you glad? So we can live a blessed life here on earth while we're waiting for the redemption of our soul and our spirit. Thank you, Lord. So understanding redemption, the complete forgiveness of our sins, is foundational to understand the new covenant and how God deals with us today. If you're born again and you're still asking questions like, can I lose my salvation? If I die with unconfessed sin, will I go to heaven? Does God answer the prayers of someone who still sins? If you're still asking those questions, you really don't understand redemption. Amen? Because redemption, we've already been ransomed. We've already been, our ransom has been paid. And we don't have a price to pay. Amen? Redemption is very practical. And your understanding of it will, term, will determine what you're able to receive from God, not just in eternity, but here and now. If we don't understand redemption, then we don't understand how much God loves us and, and that we can receive healing and that we will uh, have provision for every need that we have because that's what he died to do. Amen? Thank you, Lord. In the word, it says that sin came to us because of Adam and we need to be transformed into Christ it says that the uh, our father Satan if we live in the world if we come into the world as sinners and the our father is Satan and we need to change families making God our father amen we are said to be spiritually dead and we need to be made alive in Christ Jesus we are slaves to sin and Satan, and we need to be made free. Amen. And only receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is going to give you that freedom. Amen. I think every one of us in here understand that. And it's, it, I think this is a simple message, but still there, we, we don't understand it and we don't receive it. Amen. Right? I mean, I think that we need to take hold and know that we don't have to worry and we don't have to be conscious of sin. Jesus has already paid that price. And sometimes, you know, we're hard on ourselves and for no reason, right? Because Jesus died to come give you peace, peace with him. You don't have a war to fight. The war is over. There's peace. And it's not peace in the world, but it's peace between you and Jesus and God. Amen? Do you all receive that? Did you get something out of this message? I hope. <laughs> it's simple. It, 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 it's kind of, it, people make it really hard, harder than it really is. And it's simple and it's plain. And um, for us to understand it and live it. Amen? If you're watching online and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, today is a good day to do that. Amen? All you have to do is, like the word says, is to believe in your heart and, and confess with your mouth and make him your Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. You will, you will 
um, a great miracle, that great miracle will happen for you. Now, you're a sinner right now, but the minute you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you're no longer a sinner. You're a child of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So just say a, a simple prayer. Lord, you know my life, Father. Father, I'm a sinner now, but I want, I believe in my heart that you went to the cross for me, that you were buried and you were resurrected and that you paid the price for my sins on the cross, Father. I believe it and I, was, I, I believe it in my heart. And I'm confessing it with my mouth. And I make you the Lord of my life. Take my life and do something with it, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. It's that simple. And we believe that you've been saved, and we want to welcome you to the family of Christ. Amen. You are now part of the Christian family worldwide. We're everywhere. Amen. And... Um, Get in a good Bible teaching church that will teach you the word of God so that you can grow and know what you did. Amen. And if you will um, email us, go through our website and send us, drop us a note. We want to send you a book um, about what you just did and to help you get started. Amen. So we want to send that to you. Um, I want to thank you for being with us here today, and we we're going to dismiss our viewing audience. Thank you for being with us. Hope to see you soon. Amen. God bless you all, and have a blessed week.